In this lecture, we will discuss the next two properties of Fourier transform and they are differentiation in time and integration in time. So let's try to understand differentiation in time property and for this I will assume a time domain signal xt and let's say the Fourier transform of xt is equal to x j omega and now we will perform the differentiation in time domain. This means we will perform the differentiation of time domain signal xt. We will perform its differentiation one time with respect to time and after performing the differentiation the new Fourier transform which was initially x j omega will get multiplied by j omega and if we perform the differentiation one more time this means two times differentiation of xt j omega power 2 will be multiplied to x j omega so we can generalize it for k times differentiation if we perform k times differentiation of signal xt with respect to time then j omega power k will be multiplied to x j omega which is the original Fourier transform of signal xt so this is all for the differentiation in time property and now we will prove this property and to prove this property I will use the formula of inverse Fourier transform we know inverse Fourier transform will give us the time domain signal xt and it is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity frequency domain signal x j omega multiplied to e power j omega t d omega and everything is multiplied by 1 over 2 pi now we will perform the differentiation on both the sides so we have differentiation of signal xt with respect to time on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have e power j omega t as the function of time so we will differentiate it with respect to time integration minus infinity to infinity frequency domain signal x j omega multiplied to differentiation of e power j omega t d omega and we know the differentiation of e power j omega t is equal to j omega multiplied to e power j omega t I hope you remember how to perform the differentiation of exponential signals so on the left hand side we have differentiation of xt and on the right hand side we have 1 over 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity x j omega multiplied to j omega multiplied to e power j omega t d omega I want the form as in formula of inverse Fourier transform therefore I will combine these two and we have d x t over dt equal to 1 over 2 pi integration minus infinity to infinity j omega multiplied to x j omega multiplied to e power j omega t d omega now if you compare this with the standard formula of inverse Fourier transform you will find j omega x j omega is the Fourier transform of time domain signal dxt over dt and you can see for time domain signal xt the Fourier transform is equal to x j omega and after performing the differentiation of xt one time we are having the Fourier transform x j omega multiplied to j omega in the same way if you perform the differentiation k times j omega power k will be multiplied to x j omega so in this way we have easily proved the differentiation in time property of Fourier transform and now we will move to the next property which is integration in time and first we will understand the property and then we will prove it let's say there is a time domain signal xt and this signal is having the Fourier transform equal to x j omega after this we will perform the integration and as we are performing the integration in time we will perform the integration of time domain signal xt and let's say we are performing the integration from minus infinity to some instant of time t I will write signal xt as x tau I have replaced t by tau tau is the dummy variable and we are doing this to avoid the confusion between the instant of time t here and the variable t in this signal so we are having 
x tau d tau and the Fourier transform which was initially equal to x j omega will get divided by j omega and then added to pi x 0 multiplied to delta omega. So this is the property and you have to remember this property. Now we will prove this property and to prove this property I will consider the convolution of xt with ut and we know it will be equal to integration minus infinity to infinity x tau multiplied to u t minus tau d tau. Now we will focus on u t minus tau to have the clear understanding of this integration we will obtain the waveform of u t minus tau step by step. So first we will obtain the waveform of u tau. It is very easy to plot the waveform of u tau because we already know how the waveform of unit step signal looks. When tau is from minus infinity to zero, u tau is equal to zero. When tau is from zero to infinity, u tau is equal to unity. After this we will perform the time reversal operation and we will have the waveform of signal u minus tau. In time reversal operation we will simply flip the waveform of u tau about the y axis. So we have the waveform like this and finally we will perform the time shifting operation in which we will shift the signal waveform by t and we don't know about t whether it is positive or negative. So we don't know about the right shifting or the left shifting. So I will consider the case of left shifting. You can also consider the case of right shifting. So after performing the time shifting operation, we have the waveform like this. And this is the waveform of u t minus tau. And you can clearly see when tau is from minus infinity to t, u t minus tau is equal to one. And when tau is t to infinity, u t minus tau is equal to zero. And now we will use the waveform of u t minus tau to simplify our integration. x t convolution with u t is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity x tau u t minus tau d tau. Now we will break this integration into two different integrations. In the first integration we are having the range of integration minus infinity to t signal x tau multiplied to u t minus tau and from here it is clear that when tau is from minus infinity to t u t minus tau is equal to 1. So x tau is multiplied by 1 and after this we have integration t to infinity signal x tau multiplied to u t minus tau and from here we can see when tau is from t to infinity u t minus tau is equal to 0. So as 0 is multiplied to x tau, integration of 0 is going to be 0. So we are left with integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau. And if you compare this with this, you will find the integration of time domain signal we are having here is same as x t convolution with u t. So if we can prove the Fourier transform of x t convolution with u t is equal to x j omega divided by j omega plus pi x zero delta omega, then we can say that our property is correct. So we will focus on obtaining the Fourier transform of x t convolution with u t. So we will find the Fourier transform of x t convolution with u t. We have already assumed the Fourier transform of signal x t is equal to x j omega. And in the Dirichlet conditions lecture, I gave you the Fourier transform of ut. So first we will write down the Fourier transform of time domain signal ut. It is equal to 1 over j omega plus pi multiplied to delta omega. And now we will use the property known as convolution in time. And according to the convolution in time property, when two time domain signals are convoluted, their Fourier transform is equal to the Fourier transforms of two signals multiplied together. So we will have the Fourier transform 
of time domain signal xt multiplied to the Fourier transform of time domain signal ut. Fourier transform of xt is x j omega and Fourier transform of ut is equal to 1 over j omega plus pi delta omega. So we have 1 over j omega plus pi delta omega. Let me rewrite omega here. It does not look good. So pi delta omega. I will open this bracket. So we have x j omega over j omega plus pi x j omega multiplied to delta omega. So we have somewhat obtained our property but still we need x zero here and for that we will use one very important property of impulse signal. If there is signal x t1 and it is multiplied to delta t minus t naught then we simply replace this t1 by t naught. So in place of t1 we will have t naught. So we will have x t naught multiplied to delta t minus t naught. And here we can write pi x j omega multiplied to delta omega minus 0. Omega naught is equal to 0 in this case. So this omega will be replaced by this 0. So finally we are going to get pi x 0 multiplied to delta omega. In this way we can easily obtain the final result. We have x j omega divided by j omega plus pi x 0 because omega is equal to 0 as impulse signal delta omega is multiplied delta omega and you can see this is the Fourier transform of xt convolution with ut and xt convolution with ut is equal to integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau. So we can say that we are having the Fourier transform of integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau and it is equal to x j omega divided by j omega plus pi x zero delta omega and this is the same thing I have given as the property. So in this way we have easily proved the property known as integration in time and if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.